All right, so back to how we define levels of work inside the role. There's a piece of paper you're going to need to do this assessment with. Now, this piece of paper is uh, usually a description of the tasks and activities associated with these roles. It's usually in a three ring binder up on a shelf somewhere. No one's looked at it for five years, and it's called a job what? Job description. I truly wish this was something more elegant that I could actually sell to you, but it's not. You've already got this stuff. The problem with your job descriptions or your role descriptions is that while they do a good job of describing tasks and activities, they usually do a very poor job of identifying the level of work. So Ellie would have you make this small managerial notation in the upper right hand corner of that piece of paper. This is an internal managerial notation. If you have a stratum one level of work, in the upper right hand corner, Elliot would have you write, this is a stratum one role. This position in the organization is to do what? Production. Production. Using tools, machinery, and equipment. Now, some of you have a business model where your production work is actually not done at stratum one. For example, Greg, uh, you do uh, financial management, is that correct? And so your production may more properly be done at stratums two, three, four, and even five, depending on whether it's de designing a 401k program or doing some other more extensive money management. So in your case, your production may be done at stratums two, three, or four. Uh, attorneys, law firms, same thing. Most of their production work may be done at stratums two, three, or four. The calibration for those is simply inspecting what's the time span of the task involved. For an attorney, you'll be looking at you know, what's the, the case of litigation. So you could have five years of litigation might require stratum five production work. Stratum two. If you have a stratum two role, at the top of the role description, Elliot would have you write, this is a stratum two position. This role in the organization is to do what? Make sure production gets done using schedules and checklists and meetings. If you have a stratum three role, stop the role description. Elliot would have you write, this is a stratum three position. This role in the organization is to create what? Create systems. Create systems, monitor our systems, and constantly improve our systems. Think about this. What is the central question for a stratum three manager. Your customer shows up. Now let's make this a big customer. Your biggest customer shows up with the biggest problem that you've ever seen. They want it fixed. What should be the central question for the stratum three manager? How to fix the problem? No, quite frankly, we have people who fix problems. We also have supervisors who make sure problems gets, get fixed. What's the central question for the stratum three manager? Why didn't our system anticipate this problem? Or at least why didn't our system mitigate the damage from this problem? If you have a stratum four role, at the top of the role description, Ellie would have you write, this is a stratum four position. This role in the organization is to do what with our multiple systems and subsystems? Integrate them together, integrate them into a whole system. Now some of you are playing stratum five business unit president roles. Uh, you all have role descriptions, right? Just wink and tell me you do. Kathy's laughing at me. At the top of your role description, Ellie would have you write, this is a stratum five position. This role in the organization is to create a clear and compelling vision that is relevant to our marketplace. You would be amazed at the clarity that arrives by this simple notation in the upper right hand corner. Most supervisors don't have a clear understanding that their role is to use schedules and checklists to make sure production is getting done according to targets. Your managers have no understanding that their role is clearly to create systems that anticipate the eventualities of things that might happen so that we can create alternate paths to the goal. Because on a long time span project, does that stuff come in sideways and screw everything up? absolutely does. And I will hold a stratum three manager accountable for creating those alternate paths to the goal. They've got the capability to do it. Now on page seven or page eight you have other disciplines like accounting, product development, sales, 
Let's go back to sales. What's the time span capability you need in your salespeople? Now, if you're a consultant, you know the first two words are always, it depends. But it depends on what? It depends on something very specific. The time span capability you need in your salespeople depends on the length of your sales what? So if your sales cycle is five to seven minutes over the telephone, what kind, what stratum level of work would that be? If, however, you have to create a relationship, a trusting relationship, that may take six to eight months to develop that relationship before you even get your first order, what stratum level of work might that be? If you have a two-year sales cycle where you're doing needs analysis, needs assessment, prototype building, prototype testing, prototype deconstruction, prototype reconstruction, just to demonstrate that we have the internal capability to bid two-year sales cycle, maybe for a government project. What stratum capability might you need in that salesperson? High three, low four. That person may not even be managing other people, yet managing the uncertainty or the ambiguity in a sales cycle that may take as long as two years before we finally get a contract. You have other examples of plant production, quality control, project management. What's the difference between a junior project manager and a senior project manager? Time span. If I describe the internal capabilities of our junior project managers, who have the capability to handle projects up to 13 weeks in length, three months, and yet our senior project managers can handle more complicated, more complex projects up to 18 months in length, just by using time span, you now have a very clear and accurate understanding of our internal project management capabilities, simply because I use time span to describe its complexity.